Alrighty, <clears throat> excuse me. Alrighty, welcome back, everyone. We just talked about some of the big time performances from the top t uh, 25 teams. Texas gets a big time win, dominating win in the Red River rivalry. We also get uh, BYU getting a huge win, continuing their perfect season, as well as Pitt. So a number of big time wins there. But let's get into a little bit of a whip around. We'll start actually with a top 25 team, and they gave us the lone upset of the weekend. Happened all the way back on Friday. So if you remember this game, Utah did lose to Arizona. State 19 to 27 on Friday and this one was really really fun it's becoming a little bit it was a pseudo Pac-12 after dark and I absolutely loved it but at the end of the day Cam Scadaboo was the story 22 carries 158 yards two scores he was absolutely remarkable the other story was Cam Rising was back in this game and he did not look right by any means 16 for 30 at uh, 37 209 yards three touchdowns frankly if you're asking uh Cam Rising to throw 37 passes in a game you're doing things wrong. That's just the reality of that situation. He is not someone, especially coming off an injury, that you should be relying on that heavily. But overall, he did not look healthy to me. The throws that he was making looked like they had not a ton of juice on them, gave Arizona State's uh, backs a ton of time to break on routes and things of that nature. So I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I don't know if it was, we got to get you out there because you know this thing is going to get out of control really quickly. I don't know what that conversation was. But I can say pretty confidently that was not 100% of Cam Rising. But huge respect to Kenny Dillingham. He deserves all the respect in the world. He was picked last in the Big 12 rankings going into this season. Utah was picked first. He just beat them on his own field. It was absolutely incredible to watch. You saw it after the game, how excited he was. He's one of those guys that I cannot wait to see succeed at a higher level. He's so incredible to watch. He's got just infectious energy and one of the best play callers in the sport so absolutely love it five and one start in the big 12 and very much on their way to at least being in the fight you never know what happens going forward in the big 12 so arizona state if they're able to run the ball like that and play uh, solid defense who's gonna stop them at the end of the day and then we got iowa how did this happen they scored 40 points guys they they didn't even score 25 did 30 30 would have been really cool 40 is ridiculous, and it was uh, it was obviously Caleb Johnson at the very center of it, 21 carries, 166 yards, two touchdowns, but the reality was they were all over the place. It was incredible to watch this team, and frankly, it was an Iowa team that I didn't know what I was watching. I didn't know if it was an uh, aberration. I didn't know if it was someone lying to me, but Iowa did this. They actually scored 40 points on a really good defense. Like Washington is not a scrub defense by any means. The travel definitely played a part here, but the reality is I was blown away when I saw the final score for this one. I'll just put it that way. But for Iowa, you're in the fight. Uh, like a lot of these teams that we've been talking about, you know, I'd be hard-pressed to tell you that they're going to make a CFP run. But at the end of the day, they have every single chance. They'll probably be favored in pretty much every single game the rest of the way. So who knows what happens? I'm a little bit skeptical still, but if they're going to put up 40 points all of a sudden, then maybe they're a real uh, real team going forward. And then for Washington, just got put in a bad spot here more than anything else. Huge emotional win uh, last week over Michigan. Travel all the way, play a really a physical team. I didn't think they had a real shot in this game, and they really didn't have a shot in this game. I got to talk about Wisconsin because we talked about it last week when we were talking when we were breaking down this game just said Wisconsin just needs one of these they need to give their fans something to look up at and say hey we were able to beat Rutgers we were able to beat them on the road we beat them comfortably you know underdog going into that game they beat the crap out of this team they were really really incredible this offense is really starting to come together 56 points last week 42 this year at this uh this time and I understand 56 again uh, against Purdue is whatever 42 against Rutgers is really impressive. Um, I think they're doing a really, really good job. And Toby Walker was at the very center of this thing. And it's one of those things. You look back at that Oklahoma offensive performance, and then you see Toby Walker and D uh, Dylan Gabriel being some of the stories of the weekend. Rough, if you're a Sooner fan. I'll just put it at that. But Toby Walker was incredible. 24 carries, 198 yards, three touchdowns. Braden Locke really found himself outside of that one INT. He was really incredible and definitely a guy that's really getting comfortable in that offense and they had explosive plays in this game. It's what Phil Longo came there to do and they're finally finding those few uh, a, a little bit more consistently. This is a team that I don't think they're going to do anything this year necessarily, but they're saving a little bit of that energy going forward into 2025 and they badly need it on the recruiting trail and Rutgers is just taking a little bit of tumble. They t took a tough loss to Nebraska a couple of weeks ago and just didn't really recover. Uh, a very, very fun team, one of those teams that was playing really good football, but we get this pretty much every single year. We get a really uh, we get a fun team that's 4-0, 5-0 to start the season and we really want them to run the table. 
it tends to come to an end. And that's what happened with Rutgers. Really like this team. Love Kyle Monagai. Love what uh, Greg Schiano's doing over there. But this was going to be a little bit too much for them. But moving on, Georgia Tech, this finish was incredible. This was a game where Georgia Tech was in a position. UNC scores with, I believe, about a minute left. Maybe a little bit less than a minute left, frankly. Georgia Tech gets back on the field. And they did the thing that a lot of teams do, where they throw one pass if it doesn't give them what they wanted to. They're going to run the ball and see what happens. You know, if you go for four yards, we'll go to overtime, whatever. That's more than fine. Then Jamal uh, Haynes took it 68 yards to the house, and they won the game 47, 41 to 34. This was a Paul Johnson special. They had to, He had to feel really good smiling watching this game. 48 carries, 23 passes on the day, thir- uh, 371 yards on the ground, five touchdowns. That was what he wanted. No two ways about that. I I hard pressed to figure out uh i believe that brent key was sending him a little bit of a message just saying you're still a part of this program no two ways about that but remarkable performance they took advantage of them all day on the ground got i believe three running backs over 60 yards it was incredible from this georgia tech attack and buster faulkner continues to be a really good play caller in this sport and then for unc they got a really good performance from jacoby Criswell. 13 for 31 209 yards one touchdown through the year 13 carries 73 yards two touchdowns on the ground it's a Georgia Tech defense that is a little bit more attackable. No two ways about that, but at least gives you a little bit of momentum and a little bit of confidence in your quarterback going forward, and that's huge for this team. Then we got Louisville. They ended a little bit of a fun run from Virginia, a very fun team that was 4-1. and one. They were playing good football. They had gotten a big win, and then Louisville had to uh, kind of ruin it for everyone. But the reality is a very fun uh, game here. I think Louisville needed this win about as badly as anyone. Three in a row would totally bury your season and will put you in a place where you're not even coming back in the crazy ACC with three losses I can tell you that so a huge win for him I don't think they're going to make a ton of noise they're one of those teams that I think is just going to be too inconsistent week to week but they are a very dangerous team if they can put it together if they can get that defensive line going a little bit more hit those deep shots they can make some plays no two ways about that as of right now wouldn't necessarily peg them into the ACC title by any means or really anywhere close but Definitely a team that could uh, cause some problems. They do have a... The reality is a lot could change this upcoming weekend in the ACC, just in general. Louisville has Miami. Virginia has Clemson. Let's just say they both knock them off. It's chaos in the streets. We're having to figure out SMU would probably be the top team in the ACC and everything would be all out of whack. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen, but we'll get there. Maybe my mind will change before I pick that game. I gotta give love to Vanderbilt. This was one of the most impressive wins of the weekend. It just got overshadowed by all the other impressive wins of the weekend because Vanderbilt had the craziest week a lot of those kids probably have ever had. I know it was the craziest week that Diego Pavia ever had, but they bounce back. They refocus. They go on the road to a not an easy place to play and get a big time win. And there's a very good defense on the other side. Diego Pavia did have an INT in this game, but the reality is two incompletions other than that, two touchdowns over 50 yards rushing. He continues to be one of the most important transfers in college football. Frankly, I am very, very close to shooting him up in the Heisman odd just because find a more valuable player to what that team does. I can't find one across the country. He's been absolutely remarkable. One of those guys that if he leaves the field, I don't think this team even puts up a fight against a lot of the teams they're playing. When he's on the field, that team plays with a little bit more energy. He makes all of the right plays. Could not be more impressed with that kid and cannot wait to see what he can do the rest of the season. But Here's the thing about this. Vanderbilt gets a big win here. Absolutely awesome. Keeps the train rolling. Goes to 5-2, and two, doing things that no one expected them to do, including myself. They get Ball State this upcoming weekend. And then Texas comes to town. And that is a Texas team that could be number one in the country, coming off a win over Georgia. You can't write it up like that. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how the scheduling happened on that one. But Texas got to be ready, because that could be a scary, scary moment, and Vanderbilt could do another ridiculous thing. Now, I'd be a little bit skeptical, but we'll get there when we get there. Maybe something, there's a little bit more magic over there uh, at Vandy, but remarkable performance, and one that they very much needed to get, and keeps them alive for a lot of things this year. Memphis gets a huge time win over USF. This one became a slugfest in a hurry, and it was something that I kind of expected. Bet, uh, took the under in this game, and it was one of those games that a lot of stuff around this one. I, I don't think I need to tell you guys. Those kids have been dealing with, and coaches have been dealing with stuff that I can't even fathom. And frankly, getting out there and playing a uh, football game, remarkable. That is what we call true mental toughness. There's plenty of mental toughness around the college football world, but 
it was on full display uh, in this game. No two ways about that. No Byron Brown in this game made UCF's life pretty much impossible. Uh, no two ways about that. He is a lot of their off- offense. Bryce Archie just was put into a really, really tough spot and didn't play great football. 22 for 41, 234 through the air, one INT, just not pretty. And kind of what you expected with Byron Brown not being in the game. Not sure what the status is going forward, but USF missed the mark this year. Uh, they started the year with two just ridiculous games against Alabama and Miami and weren't able to recover. It's always really tough. I think this is a very talented team. I think Alex Golish is an absolute dude at quarter at, at, at quarterback, at, at uh, head coach, but a very, very talented team just got ahead of them a, a little bit. I think if they play one of those two games, Alabama or Miami, they're probably in a little bit better of shape. But at the end of the day, a really fun team, one that fought and scheduled teams that a lot of teams are scared to uh, schedule. So absolutely love that from them. Memphis really dominated on the ground. That's going to be a huge thing for them going forward. Only allowed 24 rushing yards on 19 carries for USF, which is another real reason why Byron Brown was missed, and then 4.7 yards per carry. So if they can do that going forward, they're in really good shape, and a team that very much is at the head of the table, really, when you talk about the CFP race. Maybe not the head, on the table for the CFP race, with Boise State probably at the head. And then we got this one. Army gets a big-time win again over UAB. The service academy just continue to roll, other than Air Force. All love to Air Force. But at the end of the day, Army and Navy have been incredible to watch this year. I absolutely love it. One of the best stories in the entirety of college football. They've been one of the most dominant teams in college football. Every single one of their games, they bury the team on the other side. So could not be more impressed with Jeff Munkin and company doing an incredible job out there. And then Bryson Daly is a show to watch. He is absolutely incredible. Three for seven passing, 102 yards, one touchdown passing, 12 carries, 136 yards, four touchdowns on the ground. This kid's awesome. Uh, we talked about Diego Pavia. He might be just as important, if not more so. He's absolutely incredible to this team. And frankly, they continue rolling on. Who knows what happens going forward? They have ECU this upcoming weekend, then a bye. They could very easily be undefeated walking into that Notre Dame game. And then who knows what happens. But at the end of the day, it's one of the best stories of the of the year whenever you get to see Army and Navy in the conversation. I believe they were ranked in the AP for the first time since 1960, so really cool. Cannot get enough of that. Very much want them to run the table and set up just chaos at the very end of the season, but plenty of time to go there. We'll obviously keep you updated, but That'll do it for this lengthy show. Uh, Had to get a ton in. Incredible weekend. A week seven that we circled all the way back in probably April. It lived up to the hype. It was absolutely incredible. Great performances all across the weekend. The only one that didn't hold up their end of the bargain is Oklahoma. And frankly, it was going to be hard to against that uh, Texas team. So really remarkable uh, uh, weekend. Cannot wait for this upcoming weekend, which... Has a lot of incredible ones too. But that'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. So please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference for us. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all the social pages for all the content and updates you could possibly need. We have really incredible people doing awesome work across every single sport you could want. So anything you need in the world of football, NFL, uh, basketball, we get tennis going here pretty soon, a million different things, anything in the world of sports, come on over to GSMC and we have you totally covered. Thank you once again for listening, and I will be back to continue to break down the crazy weekend we just saw.